Yo, it's your boy Logos, and tell when we react to another FD sit in the fire video. This time, he goes into the manosphere, and the particular area I want to talk about or listen to is when he dies into Kevin Samuels. I'm really not expecting much out of this or out of film after the last video I did when he was talking about black Republicans. And I, the only thing I could get out of that was somehow I'm supposed to be a Marxist too, because he claims that MLK and other black civil rights leaders were Marxists. And I guess I just supposed to make me help on the bandwagon. He didn't bring up no historical evidence or economic type argument to make me want to be a Marxist. I'm supposed to just jump on the bandwagon because I'm black. <laughs> oh yeah, and I forgot, he talked about Thomas Sal haircut, how that's some type of symbol of coonery. Yes, high school arguments, but this should be an entertaining video, so let's get into it. One thing that has always confounded me is the manosphere or red pills anti-simping policy. Now, like I've heard people say being a simp is bad because a real man should, you know, I guess have standards and shouldn't have to work for or pay for the attention of women or something. I'm not sure. The thing that throws me is that tell you simping sure. is bad, but only for women, it seems. Because if there's any bigger group of simps for non-women, it's niggas in the manosphere. It's just they don't simp for cool stuff like, you know, sex workers, titties, legs, ass. None of that. Shame, shame, shame to simp for that. But for other niggas, woo, they will simp all day. And they simp for these dudes for kind of the same reasons that any man might simp for a lady. They want attention. They want that person to make them feel good, to make them feel better about themselves, uh -huh. to entertain them, to fill them with a sense of joy that maybe helps them get through their day. It's just the, I don't know, I don't want to call it natural, but the urge to simp for a lady is somehow unmanly. But no, these dudes simp for grifters. They simp for men who quickly abandon them when the opportunity comes. It's embarrassing, really. And for a two year period of time, nobody was making more money off the simping of other black men than one particular person. Some call him the godfather of the manosphere. I call him king of the simps. You know who he is. You made it this far. So let's talk about Kevin Samuels. Well, I can already see we're starting our climb on the bullshit blimp because he's trying to correlate. I don't know, being a fan of a content creator, the same way he has fans and subscribers to being a simp. And he said at the start, he doesn't even know like what a simp is or the type of stuff they do in the manosphere or anything like that. And they don't simp for ass, titties and legs and stuff. I don't get what his point is trying to be. P you being a fan of a particular content creator doesn't make you a simp or a stan or anything like that. Now, if that content creator does a 180 or they backtrack in a nonsensical type of fashion, then that sounds to me like a simp or a fanboy or somebody that doesn't allow criticism of their favorite content creator. But men having, I don't know, just deciding to spend their money on some besides woman or anything else they choose to feel like it, is it being a simp? He has no problem with people giving him money or other people getting or receiving money for stuff he supports. If all these same black men were simping for fucking Marxism and ready to tear their whole country apart, he'll be saying, kumbaya, we're finally getting together as a black community. But <laughs> when somebody decides to support a black man he doesn't like, they're simping. Hopefully he doesn't talk about his haircut, too. Ice bike, man. Get your ass up. Come on, Carl. What you hurt, man? Ain't nobody got no sympathy for you or your homies. Call yourself trying to jump somebody. Get your bitch ass up right now before I bust your head wide open. Don't flinch, nigga. Stand still. I said don't flinch. If you made it to 35 years old and you're unmarried, you are a leftover woman. Allison, beauty is not subjective. We're talking about black women. They are on the opposite end of the spectrum on all ranks. What does that mean to the other three out of four? That means 
is that they will die alone. Let's level set for a second. It's probably a blessing in disguise that I had technical difficulties in the Manosphere video way back when. One, because it gave me an excuse to make more content around it, which is good for the channel and helped me flesh out my ideas more. But also because I may have went harder on Kevin than I would have wanted to, especially right after he died. Girl, about this coon sellout ass mother- I got a little mask off on how I feel about conservatives in general and- Not surprised. I mean, he made it obvious in the last video that I reacted to. He don't like Republicans, even though he really didn't make an argument for it besides racism and this and the other. And it's funny. Some of the same people that talk about wanting love and peace throughout the world and building a community love to throw shade or do underhanded shitty type stuff, like talk about somebody after they're already dead, instead of saying so when the person was still alive. Very strong and leadership like. That's somebody I want for my community. It's funny, if somebody talked about his father or his grandfather or maybe somebody close to him passed saying they throw dirt on their name and he hears it, he'll probably be upset. It's just funny how hypocritical he is, but luckily I saw the last video, so that's not shocking to me. And the very, very scary influence that Samuels was having on black men and black women may have made me a bit too passionate in the moment. I have never liked Kevin Samuels and always seen his presence in the public discourse around black people to be an overtly toxic one. One that so many people seem to not care about or notice or a lot of black people were telling on themselves and how conservative they really were, that they allowed this man's rhetoric to go unchecked. They told on themselves as if he's our parent and me as a black person doesn't have a mind for myself and can decide who I listen to and who I align myself with politically, economically, or anything else. I'm just supposed to bow down and listen to him. This guy I don't know who I've never met before or it has never shown me any type of intellect so far, I'm supposed to just go along with what he says because I'm black. But Kevin Samuels and Thomas Sowell is a grifter. Thomas Sowell, who writes multiple books, research, has knowledge about history, economics, and all this other stuff, is a grifter. In a way, <laughs> Samuels, through his admittedly good presentation, incisive wit, and tell it like it is church pastor persona, plus his good looks, managed to do something that I wouldn't have thought possible. He turned hundreds of thousands, if not a million black men and women into simps for anti-black conservative talking points, something that oh nobody has been able to do to the level he did. It but Kevin Samuels constantly, over and over and over again, talked about building up the black community, building up black marriages. Like, what is he talking about? Let me let me just go back a little bit and make sure I heard that right. A million black men and women into simps for anti-black conservative talking points. Yeah, something I thought, that I thought so. nobody has been able to do to the level he did. It's been like one huge public L. It's embarrassing and indicative <laughs> of the desperation a lot of us feel that we let this man sell himself as a guru and an expert with no credentials and a past and lifestyle that clearly didn't line up with his rhetoric. And here's the key. It wasn't because he was so good at lying or hiding the truth about himself to his fans. He had so many anti fans and haters that all the info was out there easily to see. It's kind of weird. I thought everybody knew this, but he was a man who struggled financially for most of his adult life until he struck it big on YouTube. I leaders, a lot of his cult like followers and I do call him cult like, oh, my God, um, they assume that he was always like, wealthy i'm like no yeah he admittedly was like struggling it's because his fans simply did not care but for those who aren't aware let me run down some evidence that kevin samuels was very much a fraud it doesn't take too much digging to see that samuels is not what he would call a high value man which is a stupid concept to begin with but i don't feel like getting into all that right now however the reality is that Samuels was very much a man that for most of his life struggled financially. The easiest evidence is way toward the beginning of his rising when he did an interview with noted culture vulture and snitch whisperer Vlad TV. Samuels clearly spells out what his life was like before YouTube fame. Yeah, um, a lot of things changed after that. Um, 
I, I was working as a uh, in a research lab, uh, and I, I enjoyed the work, but and I decided to get a second job uh, waiting tables at the Papa Doc or Papa's Corporation, and that's kind of what led me into corporate sales because I got offered a job as a waiter. What? Okay. All right, so then you, you join corporate sales. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess you were. Uh... It's so funny because when you look at Samuels' face right here, he knows he just said a bunch of shit that don't make no damn sense. Like, in what world does being a waiter lead to telecommunication sales? He said he. He said before in this video, that it was an entry level role. So, unless you can't get into an entry level role in sales, which I believe you can, you can go on Indeed and see all the jobs by entry level sales you can do that and i was i don't know me personally because he never hit this before i was fully aware that he said he had like a chemistry major degree that he got from college and he was i think he said he was good in college and he did um that part-time rating tables like this is stuff that he said before so none of this stuff is new or changing any perspectives or he's not exposing anything he just stayed in the stuff that Kevin Sam's already said publicly so unless he got a evidence to just prove that and say it's not true then i'll be interested he already was in sales at some point so maybe that makes sense but revealing that he was also a waiter just kind of further destroys the mystique he's been building what i don't know he? too many high value men that take on a second job as a waiter in order to you know live life to the fullest or more than likely just make ends meet maybe pay child support i'm not sure Okay, yeah, this definitely sounds like somebody who doesn't know what they're talking about and didn't really watch any videos or did any deeper research, at least so far, because he said before, and part of the stuff that he says within his content is building yourself up and how you can change your life if you put in the work and gain the necessary skills and sell yourself. Like, and he said that he is evidence of that. So it's not like he hid this stuff. Like, you can have a part-time job doing anything. If you want more money, how else are you supposed to get more money if you already have a full-time job? Get a part-time job. And it's hard to get very more high-skilled part-time jobs because that more high-skilled stuff is getting taken up by full-time people. I don't get what point he's trying to make here. He also reveals that he had been divorced twice and had an adult daughter, which greatly conflicts with his rhetoric on black people needing to be married and the need for black families flies in the face of his own capacity to do so. Further in this short section, he. Once again, <laughs> and it's not even about trying to make Kevin Sims try to make a, be a superhero because I don't believe or agree with every single thing he said, but he said this stuff before. And part of stuff that he did say within his content is that he wasn't the man that he was today. Like he wasn't strong enough. He didn't have the leadership skills and he took responsibility for why his marriage collapsed. Like what more do you want? I don't get it. He admits that he never finished college and jumped around various low level direct telemarketing sales for I'm assuming 30 years or so until he started his YouTube channel. Like he talks what? about the dot com bubble like it was recently. That was in the 90s. That was in the mid to late 90s. And we're not talking about some high tech job. We're talking about MCI business development where he's probably selling, you know, ad space or phone services. Think sorry to bother you. Like that's what we're talking about. This was not a job that a high value man would have. Now there's numerous other rumors around his family that make it look even worse, but I don't want to get into all of that because I can't verify what's true and what's not. And it's not necessary to get into the uglier parts of his past to prove that the person he was putting in front of the screen wasn't real. The jet setting, the lavish lifestyle he says he lived in this content is highly specious. He definitely made probably over millions of dollars since blowing up in 2020 in that two year span. But you can just look at the scenery in his videos and the lifestyle that he seemed to be living in 2018, 2016, 2017, when he first started doing YouTube to see that the Kevin Samuels that we see as the Godfather didn't exist then. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Welcome to another edition of Life and Style by Kevin Samuel again. I would never wear If you like that. what I'm doing, what are you going to do? You're going to go ahead and click that YouTube subscribe button because sure. it doesn't cost you one dime. It helps me make pennies. And again, you're going to forward that out to as many friends and family members as possible. 
and just help me keep bringing this great content to you. Bad haircuts, struggle suits, bad sound and lighting, and a general awkwardness, that's who he was until he found the right grift. And his fans and sycophants knew this. They knew he wasn't what he seemed because while the video evidence isn't there of the exact moments, Camuel started out his YouTube career seeking entry into the first wave of the Manosphere, where he was summarily rejected early on. Kevin said, and 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 Kevin, and what about Kevin? And Kevin doing good work, and Kevin, and Kevin, and Kevin, and Kevin, and Kevin, and Kevin the same niggas it was ready to dive in anybody's ass that even mentioned the word marriage you the same niggas it was ready to curse black women out the moment they asked if you believed in black love and i'm gonna tell you right now what? if you co-sign kevin i don't oh give a fuck gosh. if you're cool with me if you've ever talked against marriage and you co-sign kevin you're a fucking hypocrite they insulted his masculinity what? and derided him that was one person speaking for, I don't know, the quote unquote, the whole manosphere. And the guy talking clearly sounds like an intelligent human being that can keep his emotions under control. So he, he's very convincing, just like the rest of this video. For his Eurocentric fashion aesthetic. Now, the second wave of the manosphere is shaped in his image, but they knew the truth too. They all saw these old videos. Without further ado. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. Welcome to another edition of Life and Style by Kevin Samuel again. If you like what I'm doing, what are you gonna do? You're gonna go ahead and click that YouTube subscribe button because it doesn't cost you one dime. It helps me make pennies. All right, we gotta talk about this real quick. Number one, the the countdown, the one, two, three, four. This is something that he used to do on all of his old videos. To me, this is the worst kind of sipping when you know that someone is lying to you, but you buy anyway because you want to believe. Or maybe you're too dumb. I don't know what this guy thinks, but it seems like he expects people to just have one ideology, one mindset, and don't progress and change when they see a better way at all for the rest of their life. Because changing the way that you start out your content creation and you see what is working and not working is just a natural thing like i'm pretty sure he didn't just start doing these long videos off rip come on now he saw what was working what was not working and he decided to keep going with it like everybody else does to know you're being lied to it's like going to a strip club and you really think the stripper likes you or ugly. you know the stripper is just doing their job which is perfectly fine and you keep spending money anyway also perfectly fine unless you're the type of person to say don't simp which again gentlemen what were you doing these last two years but being a fraud isn't really my issue with samuels it's the contents of his message that bothered me one thing i don't think a lot of his fans fully got was samuels this conservatism with a capital c which is evident to any person yes. not just a leftist but people like leaning left when you pay attention to the way he talked about marriage and women it's not uncommon to hear someone say that black people are conservative and i do believe this is true to an extent however it doesn't truly mean what many people think they're saying when they say conservative we don't really look at black folks like this but there's a lot of black folks who are conservative uh i think conservative for us is very different because our american political system whether they're democrats or republican they all conservative relative to our position but in, within blackness there's there's ways of being conservative and there's ways of being progressive it's not always a thing all the time so you can find people who hold value in like you have to look a certain way you have to be presentable I have to, I have to be held to a standard but if you look at his videos his standards are relative to the people he's talking about. you know a lot of these guys they grew up in um in urban areas when um, crime was spiking mm -hmm. during the 70s and 80s so that's when they came of age. So they do hold that view that, you know, the right. greatest barrier for racial inequality for black people are black people's behaviors. Right. That's, that's an ideology the that's Gen still X, you know, boost, yeah. respectability politics. And, yeah, and I've caught, that's why I call them conservative. When someone says black people are conservative, what they're getting at is that black people have a lot of reverence for traditions and cleave to older proven ways of living and thinking and look skeptically at change. 
That's lowercase conservatism. And this is greatly because following a traditional cultural path and norms proves safer than challenging the status quo if you're black. Doing something new as a black person is a good way to stand out and standing out as a black person is a good way to get killed. But that's conservatism with a lowercase c. With a capital C, that's a bit different. That's when black people cross a threshold from believing in the value of tradition to explicitly enforcing it, or worse yet, actively playing a role in holding black people back, holding us oh, to positions yes. we've always been forced to occupy in this country. That's where we get black Republican grifters that usually pop up because conservatives with a capital C are Coon, sellout, ass, mother, Candace Owens, Herman Cain, Larry Elder, Jesse Lee Peterson, and the father of this wave, one of Kevin Samuel's favorites, Uncle Tom Sowell. In fact, you can observe Sowell's own racism is our fault rhetoric all through Kevin's opinions on fixing black people in the black family ignoring the racist. reality of white supremacy. He even <laughs> admired your favorite racist uncle, Jordan Peterson. Anybody, you know anybody in here familiar with Jordan Peterson? When he called Jordan Peterson a racist uncle, God, this man just get more stupid than long cries. Your favorite racist uncle, Jordan Peterson. <laughs> anybody, <laughs> anybody in here familiar with Jordan Peterson? No, no. no. Dr. Jordan Peterson. Dr. Jordan oh, Peterson, man. he's a psychiatrist, psychologist out of uh, Canada. He made a big splash by rejecting a mandate from the from uh, from the government of Canada, basically saying that you have to call somebody by their designated pronoun that they chose. Early in his YouTube career, before oh, he could man. afford a decent fitting suit, Samuels appeared on the Brian Anthony Logan show. Logan being the classic brown nosing, Trump supporting, thin blue line, flag waving type of guy himself. On the show, he talks about how he used to listen to Rush Limbaugh and other corny, ridiculous nonsense. I said, wait, I started out directly conservative I watched Rush Limbaugh back in the days of the colorful times in the early 90s and the big rush. Plenty of you guys, in your own experience with women, have learned that no means yes if you know how to spot it. Al Sharpton goes out the front door. Yes, I spoke a little Negro dialect there. I can do that when I, uh, when I want to. Would you rather have ABL, a neighborhood of ABLs, or would you rather have a neighborhood of Pookies and Ray Rays? Because you can't have both. See, see, I'm a black person. I have roots that go all the way back to slavery, and I can tell you what my people went through. Now, I was born in a place called Rain, West Virginia, 95% white state. My grandmother uh, would see the KKK in person. They never heard her or anything. Matter of fact, they would bring toys and food down to the black community in Christmas what time. What the fuck? And also, I think- What the fuck the is this? Who do you want next door to you? I, the, as soon as I could register to vote, I registered Republican and the entire family- Wait, flew. hold on. So. Kevin Samuel said, who do you want next door to you? Um, Pookie and Ray Ray's or ABLs? And he said, this guy is an ABL because what he said, what the guy said is absolutely ridiculous. There's no way in hell that shit is true. What he just said, it, it, nah, but <laughs> I got, I'm gonna look up ABL while this shit is going. Democrats, Baptist upbringing, you know, church, very family oriented church up and so forth. People ask me, why in the heck would you register? For Republican, your family's Democrat. I'm like, yeah, you are. But I believe in smaller government, laissez-faire economics. I'm a hustler. I'll make it. I'll choose. But this, it's acute in our community to the point of where we don't even recognize each other as worthy of listening to. If you're a conservative, you're a coon, and you're a sellout. Just regular <laughs> black folks. We're the regular people. Yes. I don't know what the hell else is going on. I'm regular. I'm normal. This is what it was. I grew up in the Cosby era when you ran home to be to watch the Cosby show. I saw Sidney Poitier. So we, we're the norm. This last 20 years of gangster rap and sagging pants, okay, that happened, but no, no, we're it. This video has been out there for years. It's not that old where you say, well, maybe he changed it. Um, so I still don't understand what the ABL is. So it's, unless somebody can say that for me or put in comments below what that is, but outside of that, I didn't see anything wrong at all with what Kevin Samuel said. He like where did where did he say he grew up watching the Cosby show and the black family with a successful husband and wife and happy, successful kids? How dare he say that? <laughs> How dare he be inspired by seeing the black family making a good life for themselves and building generational wealth like all these black people 
we say online all the time. Like, I don't get it. How? What's so bad about doing actual stuff that we talk about? I don't understand why we say one thing and do the exact opposite. And for some reason, Kevin Samuels need to what apologize for what he just said for saying that gangster rap and sang your pants and killing each other and gang violence was like occur occur after the next 20 years after when he grew up and stuff like that. But that's not really black people. That's not who we really are. That's not what we should try to be. Somebody explain to me what was wrong with what you said. I see nothing. I see nothing wrong with that. Like, seriously, there's no reason why we should be making excuses for or making a good thing out of gangster rap or gang culture. Like, is he serious right now? I don't know. Maybe my hearing is messed up because I didn't hear anything wrong, from my opinion. Since then, it's just old enough where you know that's legitimately who he was years later when he became famous, he was just afraid to show it because he knew it wouldn't fly with much of his audience. And I had never seen this before I started researching to make this video, but I knew I would find stuff like this as you can hear it in the way he's always talked about black people. He doesn't really like us. He's talked bad about black men and black culture pretty much the whole time he's been getting attention from us on his channel. How black men wearing their hair a certain way keeps them from greater success, insinuating that black women can't be pro-black without husbands, that black women who are single mothers are How could you be even more, how could you be more pro-black than having a black family and having black children? Tell me how, tell me how. It, it, it's not Marxism. I have a feeling he'll say some nonsense like that, but it's definitely not Marxism. Shoot, let's say, okay, let's just say I agree with him and maybe it is Marxism, even though it's not. Eventually, modern day Marxists will die out. They will die. If I was a Marxist, I'm not going to live forever. So if you want your ideology to survive, you need more people. So how is your ideology or whatever you're about to say more important to the black community than um, giving boring to more black people and positive uplifting situations. Am I tripping? Am, am I tripping right now? Like seriously, I, this really doesn't make any sense to me. Our leftovers and second class citizens. Samuels played the greatest hits of this coon sellout ass mother and that's what made him so dangerous because he was really dangerous. presenting a case study dangerous for speaking his opinion and allowing people to come and go as they please to his content he is dangerous he ain't saying go beat nobody he ain't saying go harm nobody but he's dangerous i'm telling you people like him are the people you, you really need to be worried about because if you don't agree with them they will resort to violence to do it and like I said in the previous video, they're not going to just take over the government all peacefully or whatever. These people are going to do something stupid and try to do some violent type thing. And they make sense because there's nowhere in hell the majority of people will go for communism or Marxism or anarchism. Like, it is ridiculous. So the only way they could get through this nonsense of Marxism is through violence. <laughs> but they're peaceful and loving and they hate fascists because they're violent and they hate people. Oh, Jeez. and how to sell black folks on conservatism with a poison pill. But that still begs the question, how did he do it? How did he get so big so fast? In his earlier content, Samuels was selling himself as an image expert and hoping to sell his services to real high value men with perfume reviews and different style things like that. But he quickly realized that real high value men did not hang out in the black manosphere but understand if there was one skill that kevin truly had it was being a salesman so he did what any good salesman would do when he hits a wall he pivoted in a nutshell kevin samuels was the black manosphere in a suit so compared to other um content creators past and present past and present um he was much more polished so he was very articulate he, um you know, conventionally, women would see him as like an attractive guy. He wasn't like this, you know, this old fart who would just like 
man at the world. He wasn't a young, naive he like guy. Angry man. Patient, like he knows the power of appearance and how like, wearing a suit, being dressed up, give him, uh, you know, I guess him the, um, per- I would say the visibility, the, uh, what would I say? I try to say? Authority. Uh, yeah, the command of authority. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I mean, that was different. Just he just put much more effort into his appearance than other people would. He was just really articulate, which is something skill that not everybody had. Um, even though he was polished, he could still be combative, but not in a way that it's like, oh wow, like Tommy Sultan like you are, which is really unhinged. <laughs> so he's more. He was much more level headed. Uh, so I think that's what made him so um, different. As he my wife's friend compared him to a pastor, right? Yeah, he grew up religiously. Yeah. yeah. I would also add too, um, he was also pro marriage, and that's important because the manosphere is largely anti marriage. So that's why you look at Fresh and Fit podcasts, they tend to have like young, immature girls, and they have these very juvenile conversations. Uh, whereas because Kevin Samuels is pro marriage, it did bring in a more mature audience. Because Samuels pulled on the classic appeal of the call in show aimed at women that was popular on black radio for decades, even when he was younger. Here's another thing he, he conveniently skipped the whole part where he didn't just pivot over to women. He was already doing um, advice and having guys call in way before he ever talked to women. So he didn't just jump to women because he saw that's where he needed to like get on or anything like that. He already had experience with talking to men. And after talking to so many men, he decided to go to women. He pivoted to more directly engage with desperate and vulnerable women while offering his patterned harsh advice. This happened in 2018 and suddenly he found an audience and from my understanding around then is when he hit 100k subscribers. And this is also when he started to show a new level of success and money. His presentation greatly improved. Samuels grew normally doing this content and two years into it went viral for embarrassing a woman and coining one of his most quoted lines, your average at best. If you give yourself a five, that's average. Yes. So average looking women tend not to get high earning men. Where's the lie? They tend to get average men. Once this happened, where's once he the lie? embarrassed. Where's the lie? Same word, same thing how average looking men usually gets average looking women, unless they're very, very rich or I don't know. I don't know. If famous, but if you're famous, you're probably rich too. So I, I don't, I don't see how Kevin said anything wrong there. This woman and it went viral. His channel skyrocketed in popularity from the low six figures to nearly a million and a half subs at the time of his death. But I think we still need to dig deeper to understand why that happened. Kevin Samuels is what many might call an authoritarian. He does not really allow really? for criticism of him or his arguments or beliefs to happen on his time or his show. He That's a straight up lie because he literally had a thing called the smoke show where it was nothing but critics and detractors, men and women who were allowed to come on the show and disagree with him. It's funny. He says all this stuff, but he never had the balls to go on this show and actually talk to him and debate him back and forth. He presents himself as an absolute power and authority in his space. He speaks with confidence and decisiveness. He presents well. If European fashion sensibilities and European off the clothing are your thing. European wearing a suit is not European. Oh my goodness. It must be a sad, sad life to just walk around and just see everything through race and how you're being oppressed and all this other nonsense. Like, geez, like it, this is pathetic. Then to you, he'll come <laughs> off as traditionally hegemonically masculine. And thus, without knowing it, there was a great desire for what he had to offer, even if it wasn't good for those consuming it. A study in the journal. Who is this? He just said Kevin Samuels don't like people having opinions other than his own without providing evidence. Of course, it, that's a, I don't know, that's a habit I've noticed. But he literally just said that but at the same time, he wanted to claim people don't know what's good for them <laughs> in the content they're consuming. He knows better. Yeah, he's a very free loving guy that just want everybody to do what's best for them. But he, he don't want you to be able to decide that he want to decide that. 
personality and individual differences oh, in 2018 geez. found that certain features of one's personality, such as openness to new experiences and having a worldview that perceives greater danger, predicts a higher likelihood for leaning into authoritarianism. St. Andrewism did a great video on the mind of an authoritarian, and some of the examples he points out make sense here. People who are prone to authoritarianism ignore blatant contradictions and double standards. People who are authoritarians cling to us versus them binaries. So for some black folks who have a conservative mindset and are constantly in a state of heightened threat detection that value these cultural traditions and images, they might have been well set up to feel like they could trust and believe in what Kevin Samuels had to offer. He looked like the familiar images of authoritative male leadership that a lot of these people that were calling his show would have grew up under. He might be the pastor figure or the- <laughs> Hey, can you please go to, I don't know if they're still alive, but can we please, can he could please go to Soviet, I mean, Russia and talk to any people that used to live under the Soviet Union and tell the, tell him about the authoritarian measures and principles and stuff they did and stuff they suffered through. I could click off Kevin Samuels like I did multiple times whenever I want. He, <laughs> that is not true authoritarianism. Having a certain tone of voice and saying content or a dialogue that you don't like doesn't make you authoritarianism. This is why I have the opinion that just because somebody calls you a label doesn't mean you give that person the, non the credence or credit of actually making it like a viable thing to listen to. Because people just throw around labels nowadays because they don't like somebody. This is even better than I thought. The school principal, think Joe Clark and lean on me, but don't think too hard about how effective Joe Clark was in that movie, because spoiler movie. alert, that movie's kind of awful. Go on, stop. Spoiler alert, it's a movie. It has a script. There was a certain story that the writer and director wanted to tell, so they told that story. It is not your, I don't know, Rubik's Cube or, I don't know, Magic Key. No, I don't want to jump. Yes, you do. You smoke crack, don't you? I try to hold space for that <laughs> to an extent because I understand for a lot of black folks that didn't have those type of men in their lives, having one that presents themselves to them, regardless of what that means and what they're actually doing or saying, can be valuable. I had a father. My father has been present throughout my whole life from birth up until today. I talked to him today. My, my best friends, they have father figures and they didn't have their fathers around. Like this is the thing, not j just because somebody watches something or decides to agree with something doesn't mean they are trying to, I don't know, recover or make up something that's lost or they're damaged or they're hurt. Maybe it just makes sense. If somebody was to make that same argument about this guy and his Marxism, communism ideology and say you just want to take free shit because you're lazy and you don't want to do anything, you'll probably be somehow twisted into being racist. Even though he didn't say nothing about his race, he said something about his ideology. Mm, mm, mm. I get that. It's the type of imagery that some young men and women may never get. And here was Samuels offering it to you for free or for super chats or for whatever his services costs. And all you had to do in the meantime was submit to his authority. The way Sub Samuel- Submit to what? He is not over your head, behind your back, beating you and saying you should do this, this, that, and the other. Kevin Samuels won't know who you are unless you decide to go on this show, uh, unless you decide to super chat. But even then, whatever you type is all he knows. So what exactly are these people getting? Could they just maybe want to donate to a person they'd like to support, similar to how his fans would do if he had a live stream? Or is that not allowed because you don't like his ideology or the stuff he says? Hmm. I, I got a feeling. We are about halfway through. We gonna wrap this up. <laughs> it was talked about people in his content is actually like a master class in building a cult of personality. Samuels' his one true skill was his experience as a salesman, right? So when you watch him, you can see him using sales tactics on these people. He consistently did something called find the pain, which is basically a way to converse with someone to get to the core of an emotional issue, even if that issue isn't really relevant or valid in the conversation at hand. No, maybe. Not me. Have you killed anyone? No. How many times do you have intercourse with your aunt? Three times. Where's your aunt now? I don't know. Would you like to have intercourse with her again? No. Do you regret this? No. Where's your mother? 
Well, I don't know, Lily. Infringement. Ah! Back to the start. Okay. And you do that because you want that person to feel vulnerable and to feel like you are the individual that can address that vulnerability. And so when you watch Samuel's talk, he always asks all these leading questions. Did you have a dad? How much money did you make? How much do you weigh? Did you go to college? What did you major in? And this is like male or female, no matter who it was, if you wanted his advice, the first thing you had to do was answer all his questions, no matter if he actually had anything useful to respond to with those questions. And half the time when you finish answering those questions, his advice was, you need life coaching, sign up. His best mm, yeah, that's a lie. He, depending on the situation, it was relevant. Like for example, when we would go on the show and say, I want a high value man that made six figures. And then that's where we ask your height, weight, and dress size. That's relevant because of like your attractiveness and your chance of getting that guy. When he would do advice for like men, when he like was doing it before a woman, he would probably ask like your education, how much money you make and such and so forth to see where you currently at now and then where you want to be. Like any knowledgeable human being that wants to make a decision, you try to get all the information. I don't understand how you could try to twist that and to make it a bad thing that you want to get all the information before making an assumption. But I'm really not that surprised that he would try to pull some crap like that. He'll probably, he'll probably do the same thing and, I don't know, make assumptions about other people but at the same time hating it when it's done about him. Like, okay. The best trick was legit asking women to rate themselves because they would either rate themselves too high, which gave him license to berate them into submission, or they would rate themselves low and show them they could have disagreed and left the show like they did many times. ...themselves to be amenable to his authority. Another thing that gets left out of this conversation too often is Samuels' nonsense was incredibly appealing to vulnerable black women with conservative leanings who yearn for the authority of patriarchy and weren't finding it in a lot of black men. I personally believe that the type of women to become divestors and the type of women to support Kevin Samuels are both cut from the exact same cloth because both of them clearly desire this image of patriarchy where they're not going to submit or they want to submit, but a man has to have a certain status for it to happen. This is very very complex, <laughs> low-key self-loathing that makes either them fight really hard against Samuels, but for the wrong reasons, or oh, completely shit. acquiesce to whatever. Oh shit, not the patriarchy. <laughs> oh shit, he putting out all the bullshit cards. This is great. Oh man. Oh, yeah, I might have to do part two. Oh, Whatever it is shit. he's saying, even if what he's saying <laughs> doesn't make any sense. Like, here's a scene where Kevin Samuels is making some really weird arguments oh. about the possibility yeah. of molesting a woman's daughter and how that makes her inappropriate for being partnered with. And that's an unfortunate reality. That is going to that's going to prohibit you more than anything else. The kid. And I'm not supposed to say it, but it's the truth. How do you think you can make your child an asset to the kind of man you want to marry? How can I make my child an asset? To the kind of man you would want to marry. Um, let's say you and I were to get married. You got a daughter, right? Mm -hmm. and let's say we have two kids together. Mm -hmm. And your child is five. So 10 years from now, your daughter comes home and says, Kevin touched me, looked at me getting out of the shower. What happens next? The relationship will have to end. Huh? That's not something the relationship would end immediately. Because because your daughter said I looked at her getting out of the shower. Why would that person even be close to the bathroom to see her? Mm -hmm. That that would that would be the thing. You have to defend your seed. You have to defend your child. Mm -hmm. But but you also remember you got two of my kids. Mm -hmm. So that means I should never listen to I that means I should avoid women like you because off the rip your desire to defend your child mm -hmm. blew up two I'm you got two of my kids and off rip your protective instinct says fuck everything including those other two kids notice how this woman just kind of nods her head maybe she's a little thrown but I don't know I don't know why anyone would expose themselves to this type of abuse on purpose abuse. going back to that viral clip that okay. made him faint I was having a disagreement on the conversation of abuse like once again, you can't have a conversation unless it's an agreement and it's pathetic.
famous, this woman in particular was a business owner making six figures and Samuels is arguing with her that she's not attractive enough to find a man on her economic level that she will submit to, which again, that's also bullshit saying that high value men want women who are more attractive, but this isn't true. What Samuels is alluding to here is the trophy wife, which is a myth. That concept has not been shown what? to be real in what? research. High earning or high value men of all races are more likely to marry women within the same educational or economic bracket that they're in. Doctors marry doctors, lawyers marry lawyers, entrepreneurs marry entrepreneurs, or at least successful ones marry each other. But Samuels never having actually been a high value man and not having any real credentials around this did not know this stuff. So he gave bad advice, advice that didn't make sense and was abusive. But despite this, many women lined up for a moment to talk to him because they didn't know any better or they trusted the confident, authoritative man in the nice suit, which is another classic salesman strategy to at least look the part. Again, patriarchy is genderless, and for some black women, there is this intoxicating appeal for the presence and counsel of a strong man. What comes with that is that very traditional idea, the idea that a woman's worth is directly correlated to her ability to pull a man. Okay, let me say this, because I'll probably just wrap it up right here, and you could just let me know if you want me to do a second part of this nonsense. But doctors do they doctors, but here's the thing. It is often that people within the same career field end up linking up and getting married together. That's, that's usually what happens, especially for careers that doesn't make as much money compared to others, especially ones that doesn't make above, you know, 100K or 150K, such and so forth. So I don't understand exactly what point he was trying to make. And another thing Kevin Sam does say is that there is cases of quote unquote high value men, um, marry and women that don't look like an eight, nine or 10. And oftentimes the woman was with the man as he built himself up. So here's another thing, as he kept trying to mention how Kevin Samuels worked these other jobs and this that, and the other, he also failed to mention how Kevin Samuels does say that men be build themselves up. It's not just him. He built himself up. Other men built themselves up. Shoot. For example, um, I think Pearlie, she even said her father, she built, he built himself up. He wasn't always making six figures or being a high value man or anything like that. It, you have to work your way up. And evidence of that is the fact that not everybody is born on this earth at the same time. You can't just jump people in jobs and jump career fields or jump levels of seniority because oftentimes somebody is already there and they're proving their value time and time again before you was even born or sometime before you even signed up for that company. So that is another reason why people build themselves up. It isn't like no racist thing sometimes or no hierarchy, patriarchy, home you back or none of this other nonsense he probably preaches on his channel. It's there's a intricate, deep level things that goes on, but I'm not expecting anything from a person that calls Thomas Sal a grifter when Thomas Sal does research in this guy clearly doesn't but this is entertaining so if you want me to keep reacting to his nonsense let me know in the, in the uh comments down below i'm finna get ready for this nfl draft i wonder if his dumbass think <laughs> i wonder if you think <laughs> the nfl is like slavery the same way colin kaepernick did i wouldn't be surprised <laughs> he just say nothing but be bullshit so that's probably in the same line of thinking too let me let me know what you think. It's your boy Logos, and I'll talk to y'all next time. Peace.